Uh, hello and uh, welcome to uh, this lecture and thank you for the invitation. I'd like to thank Dr. Alfredo and uh, Dr. Carlos for the invitation to present at AUNA, a very interesting conference. And uh, I'm sorry that it's not live in, in Peru. Uh, of course, we would love to be there, but uh, uh, because of the pandemic, it has to be virtual, but uh, very pleased to participate anyway. And I've been asked to give you a lecture on the neoadjuvant therapy of uh, melanoma. Uh, this is the overview of my, my lecture. I will first start with the rationale for neoadjuvant therapy, NAT, as we call it. Uh, what is the reasons we consider it? Uh, then I will go into the overview of the neoadjuvant approach. I will cover some current clinical trials and data and then uh, discuss the future directions of this field. So let us start with the rationale for neoadjuvant therapy. Shown here on this slide in a, in a graphic format is the melanoma patient journey. So as you can see, the patient is diagnosed and uh, at the time of diagnosis, you usually get surgical treatment and then uh, they are hopefully uh, disease-free or cured potentially. They may receive adjuvant therapy after that. And then if there is a metastatic uh, recurrence, then they will receive treatment for metastatic melanoma. But there is this option of uh, at the time of diagnosis or even before they are diagnosed to receive treatment that we call neoadjuvant. So it's treatment given prior to surgery with the goal of helping the patient more, uh, maybe to make the surgery less uh, morbid, uh, less cumbersome, uh, uh, and also to improve survival, uh, improve the outcome of the patient. So that is the goal of uh, neoadjuvant therapy. Uh, the rationale I've summarized here for you, um, and as you can see, uh, it's a very interesting approach. In fact, nowadays there is a big push to consider more and more adjuvant approaches in multiple cancer types, not just melanoma. But we know that uh, more robust immune responses with immunotherapy, for example, are seen in patients in neoadjuvant setting because their immune systems are stronger, they are healthier patients. Also, it gives the ability to identify patients with what's called a pathological complete response rate, PCR, and I will talk about that. And that is a marker for improved outcomes. You can also tailor the patient's subsequent treatment. So depending on how they do in neoadjuvant therapy, you can decide about adjuvant therapy, which is very good. And it allows the scientific collection of specimens to study them, to learn about the patient's uh, disease prognosis and to really look at outcomes as well. And essentially earlier treatment can be better for multiple reasons, including surgical morbidity or outcomes in general. Now let us move to what is the overview of this neoadjuvant approach and shown in this picture in the bottom part of this picture is what really happens in neoadjuvant therapy is that uh, treatment is given while the patient still has the tumor in place. So it's not being removed yet. Um, this immunotherapy, for example, given in the setting could activate the immune system, attract many more T cells and other immune cells into the tumor, allow that uh, immuno immune system to work better and hopefully shrink the tumor and maybe even eliminate the tumor. And then if something is left behind, it can then be removed and it can be studied uh, and the patient can be made disease free. So that is the approach. Now, as you can tell, melanoma is a perfect disease for neoadjuvant therapy because it is often when it presents, uh, presence, uh, it, it is on either the skin or underneath the skin or the lymph nodes. So you're able to examine the patient, diagnose the patient, and the patient has the ability to have the tumor removed uh, by surgical resection, but the, tu the tissue is very accessible. So you can give neoadjuvant therapy, you can have a pretreatment biopsy, you can do biopsies at multiple points along the way, and then you can remove the tumor and you can look and see what is going on. So it's really a good model. And uh, as was shown, uh, you know, back in 2019, even a single dose of immunotherapy with anti-PD-1 neoadjuvantly can predict a clinical outcome in melanoma. It's very interesting. One dose of treatment can actually predict the patient's relapse-free survival uh, based upon, you know, the tumor uh, cells and immune cells, as I mentioned to you. So it's a really interesting approach, but it can be very confusing. And uh, what is really nice is that there has been something created internationally called the International Neoadjuvant Melanoma Consortium, INMC, which has tried to standardize 
all the processes for clinical trials in this area. So internationally now we can collaborate in multiple centers, multiple countries, and we can establish proper parameters for what are the eligibility for these trials, how the trial should be conducted, the definition of pathological complete response, because this is something that involves multidisciplinary team, as you can imagine. It involves medical oncologists, of course, but the surgeon, the pathologist, the radiologist, all these people have to work together, and the INMC has been very helpful in this regard. And based upon this collaboration, there have been some really amazing, great new data that has come out and shown here are some, uh, a couple of examples of that, that have really established the standard for how to do neoadjuvant therapy in melanoma. Now I want to cover the current clinical trials and data. I'm not going to be able to cover everything. I will show you some examples, but let's start with this slide, which shows you how active the field is. This is just a partial list, not even a complete list. There are many more trials going on, but you can see here several trials that have either been completed or are ongoing with some preliminary results. Uh, and I will talk about some of these. Uh, they involve both immunotherapy and targeted therapy, and I will cover uh, some of these trials to give you a sense of what is actually going on in neoadjuvant therapy. So let us start with the targeted therapy approach. This is using uh, dobrafenib and trametinib for obviously BRAF positive melanoma. So it is restricted to those patients who have the mutation. In Peru, it's a lower percentage than in the US. So it's not applicable to all the patients. But in this NeoCombi study, what you can see is that the pathological complete response rate, which means that this is confirmed by pathology, the tumor is completely had a complete response, was 100%, which is very impressive. However, as you can see over time, some patients did relapse. And this is an important thing that just because you have a complete response doesn't mean that there may not be a relapse in that patient. This is an important trial called the OPACIN trial. And this is looking at an immunotherapy approach in the neoadjuvant setting. But this was a trial that was done a few years ago and has been presented. Uh, yeah, this is shown from ESMO 2020. And it's a, a randomized trial of stage three palpable uh, disease, melanoma patients with stage three disease that is palpable. And they, will e they received either surgery or they were given two cycles of epinevo, ipilimumab, nivolumab, at standard dose of three milligram per kilogram of epi and one milligram per kilogram uh, of, uh, of nevo given every three weeks. And uh, of course, there was blood samples collected the patients who received surgery received adjuvant therapy with NEVO and EPI uh, after that in the adjuvant arm and in the, uh, the neoadjuvant arm, they had surgery and then received adjuvant therapy with nivolumab as well. What did this show? This showed that in fact, the relapse-free survival and the overall survival was better for the neoadjuvant therapy arm. Okay, small number of patients, but still it was better. And the pathological complete response rate was 78%. And this was defined by less than 50% of viable cells in the specimen. So interesting data. However, the toxicity from this was very high. Okay, grade three, four toxicity was almost 70%. So not a very practical regimen. So the next step was this trial called the OPACIN NEO trial. And this was designed to look and see if there could be an alternate schedule of immunotherapy. So in this trial, everyone received neoadjuvant therapy, but there were three arms. Arm A was AP3 NEVO1 standard dose that had high toxicity as in the previous trial. Arm B was the flip of that, AP1 NEVO3. So this was a lower dose of ipilimumab. And the arm C was sequential approach. AP first, NEVO second. And as you can see here, the grade three and four toxicity, as not surprisingly, was, was very high on arm A and on arm C, but arm B had the lowest uh, uh, toxicity and a very high pathological CR rate as well. So that's very good. And you can see the data here. You can see the pathological CR rate in, in the arm of uh, EP1, NEVO3 very good results and compared here across the three arms, you can see the pathological CR rate was really even higher, 57% for the patients with NEVO 3P1. Uh, and uh, essentially this is the right arm with much lower toxicity. So we know these facts about new adjuvant therapy right now that you are able to pr produce in patients very good pathological CR rates and complete responses in many patients 
but the toxicity can be quite high. So how do we approach it? Shall we use immunotherapy? Shall we use targeted therapy? What dose, what schedule? That remains to be worked out. So I summarized the trials here for you that I went over some of them with you already. So let us look at first the comparison between using targeted therapy or immunotherapy in the neo adjuvant setting. And as you can see here, looking at relapse-free survival, immunotherapy shows a better result than targeted therapy over time. Okay, so this is very important that over time, at 24 months, 83% immunotherapy versus 45% targeted therapy. And looking at pathological response, it's a very, very similar uh, uh, result as well. Uh, the immunotherapy seems to be a better approach for neoadjuvant therapy. This is a pooled analysis uh, that is shown in stage three melanoma patients. We're looking at immunotherapy and targeted therapy. And once again, what you can see is when you combine PD-1, CTLA-4 therapy, whether it is AP-3, NEVO-1, NEVO-3, AP-1, whichever it is, you get the best result over time uh, of pathological CR8 and long-term benefit. So this is important information that we have learned. Now, there's a lot of work going on. I just want to show you a couple of uh, recent trials that have been presented at ESMO, uh, this trial, the Donami trial, and then another trial at ASCO this year. So this is very new data. And uh, this is a trial looking at another agent, domotinostat. Um, and, uh, and this is a trial that uh, looked to see what could happen to the patient, what is the outcome based upon what's called the interferon gamma signature. I will come back to that in a minute. But you can see the design of this trial. They were stratified into two groups, interferon gamma high or interferon gamma low signal. And if they were high, they were randomized to receive just NEVO alone, two cycles, or domotinostat along with NEVO, two cycles. If they were interferon gamma signature low, they were randomized to the same combo of domotinostat and NEVO or a triplet of domotinostat, NEVO, and AP. And this is the rationale for the trial. As I mentioned, interferon gamma signature is a strong predictor of outcome in previous trials, as is pathological complete response rate. So these two endpoints are very important, and maybe they can help us decide which patients could benefit from uh, neoadjuvant therapy. Uh, so you can see this, this trial was you know, 10 patients in each arm, uh, A, B, C, and D well-balanced for all the subgroups uh, of our subsets uh, prognostic for factors, except for the BRAF mutation status, which was a little bit unbalanced in RMD, but overall well-balanced. Small number of patients, but providing important and useful data. Toxicity was high for the triplet, and it was obviously uh, you know, higher for uh, any arm that was com combining uh, the nivolumab with the domotinostat and the highest for the triplet, as you can imagine. What was unique was this uh, side effect of, of skin rash, which uh, would come on in the first 12 weeks. You can see how it looks here. Uh, so this is something in important uh, toxicity noted by the investigators, Dr. Christian Blank et al. And this is the important part of the data. Very interesting results that the interferon gamma signature predicts very nicely for both a pathological complete response or pathological response and a radiological response. And the pathological response is higher than the radiological response. This is a very important point that the radiological response, when you do CT scans and PET scans, it underestimates the degree of the actual response response by pathology, a very important point. But the interferon gamma signature, you can see the results, uh, you know, 70% for radiological response rate, 80% and 90% uh, for the uh, pathological response rate, even with immunotherapy, given monotherapy with nivolumab alone. And you can see here also six months of relapse free survival, both according to treatment arm and the interferon gamma signature. So conclusions from this trial by the investigators was that the combination appears to be safe and feasible. No surgery was delayed or canceled because of this uh, treatment, uh, except for the, uh, some well-manageable toxicities related to the rash from domotinostat. It was well-managed or well uh, easily managed by, by the clinicians. And the most important, interesting part of the data is that the interferon gamma signature correlated very nicely with the response, even with monotherapy with nivolumab, which I think is quite amazing. Another trial that was presented at ASCO this year is related to an anti-lag-3 uh, antibody. I think you might be aware of the data with relatinumab 
and nivolumab in uh, metastatic melanoma. Uh, this is a neoadjuvant trial looking at that same approach. Um, and as you all know, anti-LAG3 is another very important target uh, for immunotherapy. And uh, this is the study design. Uh, patients were resectable, clinical stage 3, B, and C melanoma. They had the screening. They had neoadjuvant therapy with latimab or Rela, along with Nevo, uh, given for two cycles. Then they had CT scans, surgical resection to see if there was a complete pathological response, and then adjuvant uh, nivolumab and latlamab uh, given following that. And this trial showed very similar results to all the others. There were 30 patients treated. You can see by resist, there was a 57% response rate. Uh, and in fact, the pathological CR rate was a little bit higher when the patients went to surgery. So that's confirming that this is a very um, interesting approach that can produce good results. You can see the results here in terms of pathological CR uh, broken down by both the graphic representation and by the numbers. Once again, showing proof of principle that immunotherapy approaches can produce good pathological CR rates in stage three melanoma. You can see the radi radiographic responses. And as I mentioned earlier, that does underestimate the pathological complete response rate. So very exciting things going on in, in melanoma in the new adjuvant therapy space. But let's look at some future directions. And really the future questions that remain to be answered or need to be answered are, what other modalities can you apply to neoadjuvant therapy? Is it just immunotherapy and targeted therapy? Is it something else as well? Can we reduce or avoid surgery altogether? Can we just do neoadjuvant treatment and no surgical resection is, is needed for the patient? Do we need adjuvant therapy after neoadjuvant therapy? In other words, if the patient has a complete response, or they have a response and the tumor is removed, partial response and tumor is removed to make it a complete response, do they need adjuvant therapy? We don't know the answer to that yet. And then of course, the biggest question of all, does neoadjuvant therapy improve survival? I do not have the answers for you for all these questions, but I wanted to give you a flavor of what we need to look for and what's going on. So a couple of facts to keep in mind. One is, as I've showed you, any pathological response from neoadjuvant immunotherapy results in a better outcome for elect-free survival. We don't know for overall survival yet, but for relapse free survival, very clear, whether it is targeted therapy or immunotherapy. And the other important fact to keep in mind, very important, is that appears that six weeks of neoadjuvant therapy is perfect. So two cycles of ipinevo, whatever, but six weeks seems to be the right amount of time. So you're not wasting too much time. You're getting a quick answer and you can decide what is going to happen. And you have to find out the biggest important fact you have to find out after six weeks of treatment is what is the pathological complete response rate? So given this, there is a framework that one can use. You know, you can take the patient that has stage three palpable disease, you can do a pretreatment biopsy, you can do biopsies on treatment, you can give them the therapy, and there are multiple interventions that you can do. Think about the different combinations as you have, I've shown you some of them with the, the, the Donami trial and the Relatlimab trial. Uh, multiple approaches can be taken for this and we can learn a lot, and that is where the INMC, the International Neoadjuvant Melanoma Consortium, will really help. There are some other approaches, though. What about intralesional treatment? You know that intralesional treatment is an active area of research all around the world. In fact, there is a intralesional therapy, TVEC, that is approved in the US for some patients. So I want to give you an example that there are many intralesional therapies that are also being tested in the neoadjuvant therapy space. And here is a trial that is trying to answer the question for a resectable stage three melanoma, is there a reason, can, can you um, give a neoadjuvant therapy followed by adjuvant therapy as a standard versus the standard approach of surgery followed by fenbrolizumab? You know, this is uh, the standard approach that is taken right now as you operate on the patient and you give them adjuvant therapy. What is the outcome of this in a randomized setting? It's a very important trial to look at long-term benefit Relapse free survival and overall survival. And um, here is another example of a trial that is looking, it's called an ADENA trial. It's a phase three study and uh, patients are randomized to go directly to surgery or to get neoadjuvant therapy and get follow-up then. And you know, uh, depending upon the pathological response rate, they will either get a complete lymph node dissection or not. So this is looking at the question of, is can you not do surgery in some patients or not? And uh, this is also being looked at in the PRADO trial personalized response-driven adjuvant therapy after giving AP Nebo, depending upon the pathological complete response rate, can you avoid surgery in some patients? So very interesting 
trials that hopefully will give us some really good answers uh, in the future. So I would like to summarize and end here by saying that neoadjuvant therapy provides a unique opportunity to intervene in the life cycle of a patient, to not only give them a benefit, but to learn much more about the patient and the tumor to determine future treatment. And that's very, very important. Is there a long-term benefit? That's what we have to see. Pathological complete response is the gold standard, not the radiological, not your PET scan or CT scan. That is important, of course, but really the PCR is what is going to be the important thing. Remember again, to repeat, radiological response rate underestimates pathological response rate, so that's important. And ongoing clinical trials will evaluate whether NAT will improve surgery or improve survival, should I say, or avoid surgery. Once again, thank you very much for uh, the invitation to participate and uh, look forward to uh, participating in uh, the, not only this Congress, but future events with AUNA. Thank you very much.